Just Thank Him by Ian Wilson. One of the things that I've noticed of late is the amount of sheer ingratitude in our society today. I am, of course, not immune to this trend. In fact, in many ways, I embody it. You see, I was once an entitled, ungrateful little snot. Not too long ago, I was going through a bad time. Well, not really a bad time, but my attitude about it was bad. I felt like God owed me something for the service I had done. I thought, not consciously you understand, that I deserved a reward for what I had done for him. All the time I had spent in prayer and helping people. I felt like I deserved financial security and to have nice feelings and not to have to go through hard times. I felt that I deserved spiritual gifts like I saw some of my friends getting. I don't recall ever consciously thinking this, but once I had taken the time to examine myself, I realized that was indeed the case. How did I come to this conclusion? I will probably blame the infiltration of the health and wealth heresy into mainstream evangelicalism. While I could go at length about how dangerous this heresy was, in my deepest thoughts I believed it. Somehow I had gotten the impression that my struggles were punishments from God for things I had done or failed to do. I had this idea that when something bad happened, it must be because I had done something to offend God, or that I had been judged unfairly. This is how sneaky that false doctrine is. So on I went, thinking God was angry with me because nothing in my life was going right, or so I thought, and in turn being angry at him and unwilling to admit it. Then one day, I believe it was during the Christmas season of 2020, either Advent or the 12 days, it struck me how self-centered and ungrateful I had been. I happened to be listening to the song Shasta's Complaint by Sarah Sparks that day, feeling rather miserable for whatever reason. The song is off Sparks' album Into the Land Turned Waste, which is based on C.S. Lewis's Chronicles of Narnia. The song is recounting a portion of the book, The Horse and His Boy, where the main character, Shasta, is having a conversation with Aslan, the Christ figure of Narnia. Shasta is feeling particularly miserable. It seems everything in his life has gone horribly wrong, and he is consumed with self-pity. In the song, Aslan replies, For only death in this cruel world is justly deserved. And you say I don't answer just because you have not heard. But you don't know yet how to listen or to understand my voice. It was about that time that it hit me. I didn't deserve anything that I had. I had food on the table. I had good health. I had a roof over my head. I had people who cared for me. I didn't deserve any of that. The song continues, My love, I cared for you. I was the comfort you felt in the house of the dead. I drove from you beasts in the night. All of this I have done while you slept. That was when I realized that God had taken care of me in ways that I had not even thought about. And all I had done was shake my fist in his face and complain about not getting stuff that I felt I wanted. I was putting myself on the throne instead of God, thinking that I deserved to be treated specially, when all I deserved was an eternity of suffering. So then I started practicing thankfulness. I thank God for everything, every day, even hard things. I realized that the key to the door of joy was gratitude. We must be thankful, even when it is difficult, especially when it is difficult. Because even when times are at their bleakest, is when we need it most. Some of the most joyful people I know are people who can still find reasons to be thankful, even when times are desperate. So practice thankfulness daily. In your daily prayers, thank God for whatever good has happened to you.
in bad times thank him for the strength and the lessons he gave you. Just thank him. It will make a world of difference.